Adventures, I'm Colleen Maiko, and if you're looking for something creative and hands-on for your family, we've got something for you. The Kitsap County Wood Carvers offer weekly sessions, Tuesdays 9 to noon in Bremerton, at the Sheraton Park Community Center. It's a unique and no-pressure way to find out if wood carving is your thing without investing up front. Well, except for the whopping $3 drop-in fee. As a beginner, you come in with no tools, no wood, and you, you're able to borrow our tools and, our, and okay. use our wood. First project, I think it was an axe. So we'd start you off with a blank like this, an axe blank, and then you would carve it. So it's like this in the end. And there's a little bit of, you know, there's a little, some tricks in here that you got to know. Seems like a simple carving, but once you start carving it, you you realize that uh, you have to learn, you have to use everything you learn to, to be able to carve this correctly. Knife safety is the number one thing, so we're going to show you how to use a knife without cutting yourself. I did say that I learned also from YouTube, and you can learn a lot, but and this is what I tell other people that are interested: is you really should come to to a carver in person, so like this group or other groups, because they will sit there and watch you do these cuts properly. You learn the proper way to hold your knife and where to put the rest of your fingers, which is very important. Depending on your natural abilities, it take, I think, about two sessions at least. Some folks take more. If you're already handy with tools and you're used to using tools and things, it'll be easier for you. I really prefer to teach children that are at least age 12. So right now we have a, a, a young man in our group that's 10 years old. He's coming along pretty well. He loves to carve. Twirling it is one way to do it. Yeah. As you carve, you'll notice that it gets a little harder push the knife through the wood. It should glide through the wood, <clears throat> depending on what kind of wood it is. You know, I keep an eye on people and, you know, if I see that they're struggling with something, I might step over and say, oh, you should sharpen that knife and stop and drop it and you'll have less trouble getting the knife through the wood. The first meeting, we get up and tell you who you are and, and, and what your interests are and, and uh, hopefully I'm going to expand on wood burning. Don't Take any, a pine piece of pine, and we, what we did is we carved it and we burnt it, and then uh, scrubbed it clean, and then went ahead and painted it. That's why you have all the raised, uh, all the texture in it. It's really fun to make a piece of wood sort of come to life. So you just have a chunk of wood that doesn't look like anything, you know, and to it just whatever comes out of it is is, is just it's fun. It's fun to make that happen. That process is fun. Um, I think I find it very therapeutic. Okay? It's very. Um, I mean, it's not. I shouldn't say that relaxing. You got to be very careful. The knives are very sharp. You can't carve fast, so you have to kind of work slowly. And I just find it, it very relaxing. I mean, I've been carving for uh, around 20 years, and then really got serious the last 10 years. And I enjoy doing small things I can finish within say a week. I, uh, I'm not the most patient person. And some of the carvings, as you can see, some of the, uh, the bigger carvings might take six months to finish. And I, I, I just don't seem to have the patience. But the small stuff I, I really enjoy. Uh, my second hobby is uh, lapidary work. And I love to uh, mix media do the lapidary with the uh, with the wood carving, combine them both. And I try to do that every every chance I get. That's my wife's initials, mine and my wife's. I was doing this and I figured, well, I gotta put him on a little log or something. So I was gonna make it like the old uh, carve your initials in the tree thing. And then I just kept adding to it and I said, I've gotta have a little bunny coming out, you know? <laughs> That's what's fun about carving. You can just, uh, as you're doing it, you can think of different things you can add to it, take away from it. It's uh, each piece is yours. It's your carving. You can do. You're not restricted to doing it a certain way. 
Well, it's fun because everybody is, even if everybody's working on the same thing, everybody's looks different. I think it's actually going to take watercolor or something. It's all booked up, so I should full of try <laughs> wood carving, and it turned out to be really fun. And it is really relaxing to me. And I like it coming in here because they always have good new ideas, new things to carve, so they come up with some pretty good projects to do. This was a class project that we did since last summer and did the green man. This Santa I had gotten a blue ribbon on at one of our shows several years ago. What got you interested in doing the spools? Those are really awesome. I think I saw him online. It's a guy that has done hundreds, if not a thousand spools, and I contacted him through the internet and started learning with through him how to carve spools. But they're a lot harder wood. I have chipped and broken knives in them. In fact, it could be a knife tip in one of those schools. <laughs> oh, this is very, very uh, new hobby that my friends show me. Oh, everybody is so, so nice, and mm -hmm. they, they give me the, uh, that's a motivation, and I see the nice things that inspired me to do more. Yeah, this is my second boot. First one and the second yeah. boot has a different expression. I thought it, I made the same way, but it, it's different. And each time, a little bit improvement. <laughs> little bit improvement. I got the first one I did that's in the uh, other room on display. This is the second one, and this is the, my third one. I'm going to keep going till I get it right. And this is my practice board. Go to do the features on it. This is a pretty good place to come and carve because we have experienced carvers that uh, give lessons. And she's a chainsaw carver too. Glad to have her in our club. We learn from her. And not much. <laughs> I don't like carving by myself. No fun. A lot of people weren't carving. They were not carving at home. They said, oh, I hardly carve at home. You know, they didn't realize what a social thing that the carving is, you know. So, you know, they share, share it with people and they get some feedback. And I guess that's good. They like that. The group we have here on Tuesdays is that, uh, you know, we do stuff and they're, um, they're progressing. You know, we're teaching people things and, well, Mark and Leo teach people things and you know, they, they finish the project, they bring them back, and we, and we see it. So it, that's encouraging. I started maybe uh, 22 years ago, maybe. I've done a lot of woodworking, and wood carving was the most challenging. There's an intimacy with wood carving that the other, you're using the machine, usually like wood turning, everything's fast, easy. But in wood carving, it's, uh, you know, you're holding this in your hand all the time. You've got to deal with the grain that, in ways that other wood arts don't have to deal with. This is all created by taking the part away. You're not adding anything to it, like maybe if you're building furniture. You're putting things together, and this is, you're taking things away, and you, it's, there's a point where you can go too far, and you can start over. This nonprofit club has been around since 1973 and welcomes both new and experienced carvers. Besides Tuesday Bremerton sessions, drop ins are welcome on Thursdays in Port Orchard and Thursday evenings in Paul's Bow. After visiting the Kitsap County wood carvers, we can't think of a more enjoyable way to whittle away your time. Get information about attending or entering the annual wood carvers art show and drop-in times and locations at the Kitsap County Woodcarvers website and Facebook page.